Hello, so uh, today what I want to do is show you how easy it is to use these cool little wireless uh, serial communication devices. Um, the HC12, and if you look at it, I'll see if I can zoom in here, usually it works pretty well. Okay, they're real simple, they're easy to use, they plug straight in, and one of the cool things now is that uh, I love them so much that uh, I've added additional bus to the motherboard so it plugs directly in. You can plug in both a Bluetooth and a, an RF device like this one uh, directly. In this particular case, the RF device is going to plug into the bus down here. I'll zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so the new bus, it sits right along here. Okay, and it plugs in in these last five holes okay with the electronics facing inward and the reason is is that I've uh, put it down here lower because if you look at the uh, layout of the TNC 3.2 we find that hardware serial 2 is down here on pins 9 and 10 okay so I've moved it down so then pins 9 and 10 hook directly up to this device pins 1 and 2 actually hook up up here which is where you'd be on the Bluetooth device. They are not interchangeable because unfortunately when they were designed if we look at it very carefully we can see the TX and RX pins as oh, they fade in and out of focus. I'm sorry about that. Let's try that one more time. No, it's not going to focus very well which is frustrating. The TX and RX pins are in fact flipped on the Bluetooth device versus this device so they have to be in two separate pins or two separate slots. At any rate, um, let me go ahead and zoom back out and let's take a quick look um, at what we've got going here. And what I want to show you is a real simple piece of code. I'll explain the layout first. So what I'm going to do is use this one here as a transmitter. And of course I have a battery supply so when we're untethered we'll be able to continue to transmit data from this device. And over here, I've got a similar setup on a TNC 3.5, again with the same bus. So this guy is going to be our receiver in this particular example. Let's look at the uh, code. Okay. And it's really pretty simple. This is a, a very simple set of uh, uh, instructions here. Uh, in the main loop, I have my choice between either getting the hardware serial communication or sending the hardware serial communication. Um, since we're going to be setting up this little guy here first, this one, I'm going to go ahead and comment out get and uncomment out the send. And in this particular case, the only thing we have to do is at the beginning, we do have to uh, create the hardware serial port, make sure it's accessible to code. Uh, like I said, it is hooked up to hardware serial 2. Okay, so I'm hooked up right here on pins 9 and 10. And so I'm going to go ahead and create it. I decided to call it HW Serial Hardware Serial. That's going to be the port we're going to be using. In setup, just like you do with the regular serial port, you have to initialize it. And I'm going to set it to 9600 baud. And in this particular case, we're talking about the transmitter and we're going to do something really really simple we're simply going to take and hook a sharp sensor uh, which is one of these devices here up to hardware serial I'm sorry to, to uh, analog port 0 and I'm going to go ahead and collect data I'm going to print it onto the screen and then I'm going to send that data and essentially print it out the other serial port which is then going to be transmitted out here Okay. So let me go ahead and get this guy hooked up and loaded and we'll put that piece of code on and there's no particular reason for you to uh, watch all of this. I'll probably pause it in just a moment but that is a TNC 3.2 and it is on port 3. Uh, actually, I guess this will happen pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and load this piece of code. And we'll see what we get. Oh, I will pause it. Okay, so it's loaded. Let's open up the serial port. 
Let me move this kind of out of the way over here for the moment. And it's going to be this sensor here, of course, so you can see it. And as my hand gets closer and closer, the value goes up and I pull away and it goes very low. Okay, so what it should be doing then is it should essentially be sending that particular piece, that number out, followed by a, a line feed. Okay, because I am telling it to print an undo line. That's an important step. Okay, so it's going to print the data and then a line feed. And we see it actually scrolling down to the next one. Now let's look at the receiver. Okay, and then I'll load it up. Um, in fact, let me switch this now. So we'll load the receiver up. We're going to take that guy and we're going to make it like this. So now we're going to be getting it. I'm going to load the second CUID on the other device. And the only change here is we're going to be using this function instead. And it's going to go ahead and create a loop here. If there's nothing in the serial buffer, it's just going to get hung up there. It's going to wait. Okay. If, in fact, the serial buffer has so something in it, it's then going to run this command where it's going to go ahead and print the data that it collects. And this is an important uh, kind of cool new feature here. It's going to read the string until a 10. Well, 10 is a line feed. Okay. If you haven't looked at an ASCII table for a while, you can see that the decimal value 10 is line feed. Okay. So we're going to be looking for a line feed and we're going to be then printing out that particular set of data. So let me go ahead and unplug this guy and plug it into this one. And in this case, I definitely am going to pause it while I set this all up. Uh, give me one moment. Okay, so I switched it over to the TNC 3.5 and I switched the port. And let's go ahead and load this guy up. And again, I'll pause it briefly while it's loading and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, just finished loading. So let's open up the serial window and we see something that looks uh, pretty similar. Uh, let me move this out of the way so you can see what's happening. All right, and if I put my hand, we can see that the value goes up. Now notice that the sharp sensor is connected to this teensy, but the data is coming from this teensy. Okay, so this guy here is transmitting the data and this guy is receiving it. So what we're seeing is that transmitted data going back and forth. Again, this code is about as simple as I could come up with. It doesn't say anything. There's no additional information. It is literally just taking the data and then printing it straight away. So let me go ahead and pull up yet another piece of code. Actually, I'll go ahead and minimize this one. And let's take it a little bit higher. All right, we're gonna have the same basic setup, but in this case, I'm gonna actually use multiple sensors, and we're gonna use a little bit of a, a little bit of coding to sort of separate it. Um, so let's go take a look. Actually, let's look at the hardware first. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using two sharp sensors, and what may not be so clearly visible is right here is a photoresistor hooked up to pin A9. Okay, so it's hooked up straight between the signal, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the signal pin and ground. And because of the fact that I'm doing it so directly, the other piece of information you need to be aware of is I have actually made the pin a pull up. So I charge the pin. So there's a, a residual uh, pin or a charge on the pin all the time. And the photoresistor is its pathway to ground. So we're going to be monitoring how many electrons are essentially left as they try to escape the ground through the photoresistor. Um, let's take a look at the, we'll switch it back over again. Let's do the sender first. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to be collecting the values from three different sensors. Okay. Which are set up on three different uh, analog ports, A0, A1, and A9. For the display here, when we see it coming out beforehand, I've decided to add an A, B, and C at the beginning. Okay, so it's going to say A, and then it's going to give us the value, B, the value, C, the value, and then a separation with a line. What actually goes out the, uh, the hardware serial port, though, is going to be sort of inverted from that. I'm going to put the A, B, and C at the end of it. 
Reason is because I want to take advantage of this really cool little function right here, which allows me to read until I get a value. So I'm going to be looking for A, B, and C as the ending of the data set. So I'm going to put an A, B, and C at the end of each data set. Um, let me go ahead and rearrange these devices. I'll pause it and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I have switched it around. You can see that the, the uh, USB cable is now hooked up to the TNC 3.2 with the three sensors. And you can see that the photoresistor here is C. If I put my hand on it, the value goes high. Uh, we have another sharp sensor kind of hidden back there. And as I put my hand over there, it gets high. And then the same with this front one, which is kind of hidden underneath this guy here. Let me put that up on the top. And you can see that the value goes up as my hand go, goes over it. Okay, So we're collecting the data and we're transmitting it. And we are transmitting it uh, with an A, B, or C at the end. Oh, this is also important too. Notice I put a line feed here, so we have this familiar looking data set. I've actually eliminated it here because I don't want to be looking for a line feed anymore. I want to be looking for A, B, and C. Okay, so it's going to print it out as one long thing uh, to the wireless device, but they'll be separated by A's and B's and C's. So let me set up the next one and we'll be right back. Okay, so you can see now the 3.5 is hooked up. And if we look at the code in the main loop, I've switched it to get the hardware serial, which now means we need to look at this particular piece of code right here. And once again, it's going to be waiting for the buffer to have some data in it. It's going to be in a loop. If it doesn't, it's going to stay there. If it does have data, okay, it's now going to go ahead and start breaking that data down. It's going to be looking for the A, the B, and the C, okay and printing that set of data. So if I come over here and turn on the serial port, we can see that we are in fact getting A, B, and C. And if I put my hand over this one, A goes up. If I put my hand over this one, B goes up. And as I put my hand over this one, it darkens and C goes up. Okay, so we're transmitting data from this one to this one. And of course, in this short tutorial, I haven't really gotten into too much. I could be saving these into variables. Um, I could do any one of a number of amazing things. I should point out that there is um, lots of options so far as how you can interpret serial data. If you just go to the Arduino page, and I'm choosing to use read read string until okay, but there are a number of different ways that you could be dealing with this data. And I think the next thing is I'll probably make a slightly more elaborate piece of code and further elaborate on this port on the new PRT motherboard. So hopefully that was useful, and I'll see you again soon.